Welcome to SVG TV's Evening News for Friday, May 27th. I'm Kalil Cato with the details. Prime Minister Dr. Ralph Gonzalez has received Cuba's highest national award, the Order of Jose Marti, from the Government of the Republic of Cuba, presented by President Miguel Diaz Canel. The award is named after the Cuban, the Cuban national hero, Jose Marti, who became the symbol of Cuba's struggle for independence. Speaking on the API's Morning SVG television program this morning from Cuba, where he's attending the ALBA TCP summit, Prime Minister Gonzalez said water came from his eyes upon receiving the award, noting that he's extremely humbled and grateful for the honor bestowed upon him. Dr. Gonzalez said the award was received on behalf of the people of the Caribbean, of SVG, and all comrades whom he struggled and interacted with over the past 54 years of his active political life. Especially in the last 21 years since I've been Prime Minister. And, uh, you know, these awards, awards of this kind, are uh, very prestigious because it's given by the Cuban Revolution, the, the Cuban government, and the Cuban people. And uh, the nature of this award is not going for you, the individual. And I dedicated it especially to the young people of the Caribbean, of St. Vincent and the Grenadines, to seek to follow in the tradition of the idea and the ideals of the Cuban patriot Jose Mati, who is tremendous sacrifice and work, inclusive of those who overthrew the dictatorship of Batista in 1959 and set about to build a, a, a new and different society for all peoples. The Prime Minister thanked the people of Cuba for the award, noting that SVG will continue to stand up against and defend the rights of the people of Cuba. Well, we have been very steadfast in defending the rights of the Cuban people to pursue the path of their own choice. And no government elsewhere has any right to impose upon it the government of what that other people think, that other government thinks necessary and desirable. It is an inalienable right of a people to choose their own system and form of government and economic arrangement and for all of us to work together in the interest of peace, security and prosperity for all. Now these propositions are not my proposition. These are eternal propositions which were uh, ruled out and restated in 1953 shortly after by, by President Dwight Eisenhower shortly after he took office in 1952. During his address at the opening of the Alba TCP summit in Havana, the Prime Minister reiterated his position that no country in the Americas should be excluded from the upcoming summit of the Americas to be held in Los Angeles. Colleagues, I would like to speak mainly on, on the declaration that we have adopted a few minutes ago. A, a delegation that is headed Alba TCP rejects the exclusion and the discriminatory treatment in the so-called Summit of the Americas in Los Angeles. We must understand the meaning behind this title. Alba TCP in this declaration reaffirms is the principle of inclusion that no country in the hemisphere should be excluded from the summit. 
And the host does not have the right to determine to determine who attends or who doesn't. It has no right to to invite whoever wants to attend and whoever does not want to attend. The, apart from the fact that this is wrong, in principle, and according to international convention, while in Cuba, PM Gonzalez will also participate in activities to commemorate the 30th anniversary of the diplomatic ties between St. Vincent and the Grenadines and Cuba. SVG and the Republic of Cuba established diplomatic ties on May 26, 1992. Pan-Africanists, reparations activists, and members of the Rastafarian community marked the global celebration for African Liberation Day on Wednesday. The day's activities included drumming, singing, cultural performances, and the craft exhibition in Kingstown. Officials from the Ministry of Health and Wellness were also on hand to give advice on the need for proper dieting for Afro-Caribbean people. One of the organizers of the event, Sister Aidesha Jackson, told SVG TV News that while the organization is grateful for the assistance offered by the Ministry of Culture to stage the event, she wants to see more done by the government to boost African Liberation Day celebrations. Liberation Day has been downplayed. I mean, anything with African history has been downplayed in St. Vincent for many years. Even though we, we do thank, thank the government for reinstating emancipation on August 1st, I don't think the drive and the passion towards raising the consciousness of our people is there anymore. Maybe back in 2001 it was there, but now on the government's part. But nevertheless, I must say thank you to the Ministry of Culture because they've supported us with the activity. They've organized the stage, the tents, permission for use of the place, permission from the police and so on. So they have collaborated with us, but I still think they need, need to dig deeper in their pockets to make these activities more grand, and in this way we can help to raise the consciousness of our people locally. Sister Idisha encouraged all Vincentians of African heritage to take the initiative to learn about and celebrate their history. We want to encourage persons, we need to help to raise the consciousness of the people. We're not here to knock our pull down, but we're saying get involved. We always have space for persons to become involved. Learn about your culture. We have some handouts today, so if you're passing by or you know you want to find out information, we can guide you. It's always good to read, read about your past, read information and become active and learn who you are. Because as Marcus Garvey say, a tree without roots, you know, it's like a people without your past. So we need to make sure persons learn their history, learn their roots so that they can be stronger and move forward. Musician Patrick Jr. says he believes education about African heritage should begin in the schools. These things have to be started in the school, seen, and is a society, help to shape the society. So if it's not starting from the school, it's even harder because we have to do it from scratch. And we are willing to do it because that is a part of our duty, yeah, to the, teach the youths. The SVG Indian Heritage Foundation is making preparations for the commemoration of Indian Arrival Day, which is celebrated annually on June 1st. However, due to the COVID-19 pandemic, no celebration was held for the last two years. This year will mark the 161st anniversary of the arrival of Indians to SVG during the period 1861 to 1880. President of the SVG Indian Heritage Foundation, Junior Bacchus, briefly explained to SVG TV News the significance of celebrating Indian, Her Indian Arrival Day in SVG, noting that over 250 Indians were brought to the island to work as contract laborers. So went to in India to seek out the, the possibility of getting indentured workers or contract laborers to come in from India. So early in, in 1861, they were able to get a total of 258 Indians coming out of Madras on a ship called the Travancore. That left India um, about probably late February, early March, with 258 Indians coming across to, to St. Vincent and the Grenadines. The ship arrived on the 1st of June in 1861 with 260 Indians. So you would recognize that there was some boat happening on the ship. So there are two other additional babies that came, that were, given, were born on the ship, and the 260 Indians landed at Edinburgh 
in on the first of June, and it is as a result of that we got the 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 day first of June being recognized as Indian Arrival Day. Marcus said preparations are underway to commemorate Indian Arrival Day 2022 with a special event at Indian Bay Beach on Wednesday, June 1st from 7 a.m. Since then, we have been commemorating Indian Arrivals Day and uh, also Indian Heritage Day. But today we are focusing on Indian Arrival Day. Since the 1st of June, Wednesday morning, we are going to host another reenactment experience into Indian Bay. We did not have that reenactment for the last two years, and you know everything is blame on COVID. So COVID was the reason. COVID, we couldn't gather, and we didn't want to take the chance of um, breaching the protocol. So we, we are once again going to host Indian Arrival Day on Wednesday morning at 7 o'clock at the Indian Bay Beach. We are going to have some persons dressed in Indian wear sail on a ship as if they just coming out of India and do a reenactment of that experience of 1861 on the 1st of June. The National Hurricane Oceanic and Atmospheric Administration, NOAA, is predicting an above normal Atlantic hurricane season for this year, with 21 named systems expected to form. NOAA says out of the predicted weather systems, 6 to 10 could become hurricanes with 70 mile, 74 mile per hour winds or higher including three to four major hurricanes, which could be categories three, four, or five. Here in St. Vincent and the Grenadines, the Central Water and Sewerage Authority, the CWSA, is warning Vincentians to make water storage a priority this hurricane season. Speaking on the API's Man in SVG television program, CWSA's marketing manager, Joan Ryan, said pre preparations have already begun to secure the island's water systems ahead of the June 1st start of the season. Uh, our topography, and the way our pipe systems are run um, lends itself for land slippage from time to time during the wet season. And because of that, we have to be mindful of this. We have to ensure that there are no um, trees overhanging our main lines that can cause damage or that can cause breakage. So our teams are always out um, at this time, even though we are still experiencing a dry, we are also preparing for the hurricane season to ensure that there are as little vulnerabilities as is possible to our system. So yes, we, we, are, we are on the job preparing for the hurricane season. The internal uh, emergency meetings are already taking place so that we are able to still supply our, our consumers with water. Ryan said there is the possibility that disruptions to the water supply can be extensive depending on the severity of the weather system affecting the island. In light of this, Ryan says Vincentians should make sure they have adequate water stored. We want persons to know that they have a responsibility. We like to say keep at least a two-day supply of water in your home during this time, whether it's a dry or the rainy season. You never know what can happen. And although our teams try to restore water within the quickest possible time, the, the severity of, of a, a, a possible breakage may result in us going for ex, uh, an extended period, days on end, and so we want persons to have some sort of storage in their homes. World Bee Day was celebrated on May 20th under the theme, Building Resilience of a Beekeeping Industry After a Volcanic Eruption or Natural Disaster. A series of activities was held by the SVG Beekeepers Association to commemorate the day, which included visits to the Central Leeward Secondary School in Peters Hope and the Beekeepers Apiary in Mount Wynn. Tree planting exercises were also conducted at both locations and there was a distribution of fruit tree seedlings to beekeepers. President of the SVG Beekeeping Association, Beverly Redock, said the association is currently in the process of producing queen bees for distribution to local beekeepers and anyone interested in setting up an apiary. To support your hives. So that's why we are here this morning and we are going to be planting some trees also on this farm to support the hives that we have here and this project is going to be done all over the island as from today we will be taking trees to various farms various beekeepers and also to all areas in the country we are going to be planting trees that will support the sustainability of bees and beekeeping in St. Vincent and the Grenadines and we are also doing this in collaboration with the Ministry of Agriculture 
So the St. Vincent and the Grenadines Beekeepers Association, the Australian Aid, Jeff, and the Ministry of Agriculture, St. Vincent and the Grenadines Beekeepers Association, we are going all out to make sure our bees are sustained on the island of St. Vincent and the Grenadines. Redox said there are many financial benefits in beekeeping and the association is trying to keep bees and the beekeeping industry alive in SVG. One of the best associations on the island right now where we are really getting results of the efforts that we are making in keeping bees and beekeeping alive as an industry for Vincentians. Our membership right now is about 50 farmers or more. We might have more because some people do beekeeping and they don't, we don't find them. But for our records, I think we have about 50 strong farmers. Um, beekeeping, yes, there's a financial, many financial benefits. It just depends on what area of beekeeping you want to take. For instance, you can just rear bees to produce honey. That will bring an income for you. You can rear bees to produce wax. You know, wax that you, you polish your feet and people do things for their hair and all this kind of stuff. You can produce bees for the production of wax. You can produce bees for the production of propolis. Propolis is a black substance that you would see on the periphery of the hives at times. <laughs> Families of the crew of the ill-fated Vincentian cargo vessel, the MV Fairchance, are hoping Trinidad and Tobago authorities will soon be able to officially identify the bodies which were recovered so that they can be returned home. It has now been more than a month since the bodies of men were recovered from Trinidad waters after the vessel encountered problems and sank on April 2nd. Seven crew members were on board at the time and two, Darren Small and John L. McIntosh, were rescued on the same day. One body was recovered on April 7th and another three on April 22nd. Member of Parliament for the Southern Grenadines, Terence Oliver, told SVG TV News that the forensic examiners in Trinidad want to ensure that each family receives the remains of their loved one and that there are no mix-ups. Well, at this point in time, the authorities in Trinidad, they are trying to um, determine as to, you know, identify the persons um, they have so far um, recovered. I believe that um, they are out of certain um, fluids that they need to um, determine, um, you know, to do the test. And so at this moment, it's taken um, quite a while for them to um, determine who is who. Because as you know, the body spent quite a while in, in the boat, and I believe it's had to um, decompose. So it's, they want to make sure that when um, a body is sent in whatever form, whether they have um, decided to cremate or whatever that the families receive, the, you know, the right person, the right um, loved ones. Despite not being able to secure the body, one, one family <coughs> excuse me, is moving ahead with mourning rituals, as Oliver explains that a memorial service is being held tomorrow for Owen Prescott. I know some of the families have said to me that it's taken... Um, too long and because of the length and uh, you know and of, and of how the accident happened some of them are quite um you know traumatized they're sad they're trying to come to grips with what has happened and put an end to it but it's you know it's, it's difficult for them and it's taken quite a while i believe one of the families they're having a memorial service for one of those persons who would have um, lost their lives during this ordeal on the 28th, so I think that is, that is um, tomorrow, Saturday. And, uh, you know, it, it, they're just trying to find ways and means of, um, of coping with the situation. In light of the challenges faced by the TNT Coast Guard to resurface the vessel and recover the, uh, the bodies, Oliver also says he believes there needs to be an improved system for rescue and recovery among CARICOM member states. In times like these, um, such situation, I find that, you know, it takes too long and we really need to take a look at our rescue um, methods and then once it's um, out of your territorial waters in terms of um, how government to government communication can help um, families um, cope in such um, situations. We need, we need as um, true CARICOM or true ECS or whatever other local authorities we have to really work better to make sure that um, we are really truly a 
um, Caribbean community and we look out for each other. To date, the body of one crew member, Captain Dexter Chance, remains missing. Staff and students at the West St. George Secondary School participated in a special assembly in honor of former student Precious Williams. Williams' mutilated body was discovered on Thursday, May 12th in a bag at Richmond Hill, which sent shockwaves across the nation, especially among her family and peers. At the assembly, students, including friends of Williams, paid tribute to her through dance and song. Addressing the gathering, her former teacher, Shanique Bailey, was visibly overwhelmed as she spoke of the loving relationship she shared with Williams, known to many as Little Precious. Precious entered the school on Monday, the 5th of September 2016 or 2016. I was on maternity leave, so I was not here. But we met in February of 2017 during the school's heat and then sports meet. Precious and I became close. When she became a member of my Form 4 technical class, she was one of the only two girls in the class. So we tended to talk about topics like about school and life. I'm sure, like any other teenager, Precious had her various moods, but I only experienced a respectful, quiet individual. Even if she had a problem, I never heard her raise her voice or react in a disrespectful way. She would answer whatever question I asked her to the best of her ability. And if she was upset about something, she would always speak in a respectful manner. I thought of Precious as my school daughter. Principal of the West St. George Secondary School, Mrs. Williams, said that Precious was, quite a, was a quiet person. And upon learning that it was her body found in the bag in Richmond Hill, she felt anger and hurt. beloved St. Vincent and the Grenadines. However, when I found out that it was one of our own past students, Precious Williams, I was no longer appalled, but angry and deeply hurt. Precious was an athlete that made invaluable contributions to Greenhouse. Miss Bailey spoke about that earlier. She was generally quiet, and though she did not excel in her work, she tried to do her best. At 17, Precious had her whole life ahead of her. She had many avenues available to her to build her life and become whatever she wanted to do, to be. However, that is not to be as a senseless monster has snuffed out her life before she had time to realize her dreams. Dreams unfilled. Principal Williams used the opportunity to share words of wisdom with the young males of the school on how to be better men, regardless of their circumstances. Many of our students come from depressed backgrounds. They face social, economic, academic, and psychological issues and struggle with a curriculum that many times cannot meet their needs. Boys, even though your fathers may not be in your life, there are lessons you can learn from them. You can promise yourself not to make a negative example become your life when you are a father in the future. Also, boys should realize that being able to talk about the things that hurt you do not make you less of a man. You can and will get angry at times, but you do not have to hit out at your loved ones. You can simply go for a walk, you can ap apologize to your loved one and tell them you love them. Former Minister of Health Luke Brown was also present at the assembly and urged the students to be each other's keeper by doing the right thing daily. 
I want you to have a mantra close to heart. Do the right thing. We are celebrating and commemorating the memory of Precious right now, but I think even beyond that, it's important for me to let you know that you are all precious, that your lives are precious, and that we should treat it in that way, and that we should definitely be our brothers and our sisters' keepers. Jillian Ras Shallow, Precious's adopted mother, was also present at the special assembly, but was too emotional to speak. Bishop Sonny Williams was given a new mandate to head the Pentecostal Assemblies of the West Indies International, Powi. Bishop Williams was re-elected as General Bishop during the, their biennial general conference held in Trinidad and Tobago from May 15th to 18th. The conference, which was held under the theme, Certainty in Uncertain Times, Progressing to Wholeness, was the first to be held virtually, this occasioned by the COVID-19 pandemic. The general conference, which saw a registration of over 400 participants, is the highest decision-making body of the, of the organization. Bishop Williams received 91% of the votes cast at the conference. He also presented a, the way forward for Powi in vision casting, as well as a strategic plan with a focus on church health. Bishop Williams was first elected as General Bishop in the 2018 General Conference held in Tobago. He will serve a term of four years as the term of office was extended as a result of a constitutional review, which was part of the business sessions of the conference. Bishop Williams is the first General Bishop who is not a resident of Trinidad and Tobago. Amidst the challenges faced over the past two years, traditional mass creator Elroy Blondiebird Boyd says he is anticipating a good Vinci Mass this year. Boyd, who is a skilled tailor by trade, said because of the constraints of time in preparing for the festival this year, the Mass Band will only be able to cater to 125 masqueraders compared to past years when they would normally be able to accommodate comfortably over 500. Really, um, a kind of a like before, you know, the kind of size band we accustomed bring four to 500 people. This year we might do about a 125, 150 kind of the time gone past. Our band just launch like January. So it just take me like five, six months to bring a band. Kind of band where we just bring the thing. But as we are part of the Massman Association, everybody come together with the CDC and CDC say they still want the mass. So as a part of the Massman, so the Massman Association take a stand that okay we go try to please the CDC and bring Right, so I have a part of that, so we actually doing some mass. Boyd, who has for almost all his life played an integral part in mass creation in SVG, said he is confident that despite the decline in numbers, Blondie Bird and Friends will be one of the best mass bands on the streets of capital Kingstown. I hope it will success anyhow because um, we do the best for in specialty. I could guarantee from Blondie Bird and Friends, we could be one of the better band on the road. I could have guaranteed you that from me, from my point of view. I could guarantee you that. We're getting some call from foreign, which is people who custom play with we. Right? Local people who custom play with we live in foreign. At least we're getting them calling still with them girls from Canada and America still calling and thing, right? So at least we add in another section into terms. So we're doing actually three sections. We're doing about 160 or so children, boys and girls, and we're doing two other sections. We're doing the humming board and we're doing another se two other sections, I can't tell, just I call them out we had it. So this is a actually preview. So I hope Carnival is successful because this is a preview. It's with to come for Blondie Board and Friends for the next year. Although over the years, more and more mass bands have been making the transition from traditional mass to a more modern type of mass, Boyd said that he does not believe that he will ever transition to that type of mass, noting that someone has to stick around to maintain the culture and keep tradition alive. You can't fix it that. The world change. I mean, I like my craft because it's my talent where I push and move. But you can't, I can't vex with, the, with this generation. Right? Bringing mass now, this them thing, my thing different, remember? I actually been in a school like, you know, when I coming up, my, my, my boss man was Roy Ralph, one of the best man this ever passed through and was skilled, right? You had to work with your hand and you had to build things. 
but now with the you know mass change right so i believe and somebody had to stick around to keep the culture alive let me put it the correct way somebody had to stick around the group. i can't vex with the youth with the mass where they bring it now this is them time but somebody had to stick around to keep the mass like where it be